How are you everyone? Today I will uh, discuss a new subject, the inguinal canal. Uh, to understand the inguinal canal, I want to discuss first bones and muscles in the area of inguinal canal. Uh, at the beginning, we, I want to discuss parts of hip bone. Uh, hip bone have three parts here. This, is, this larger part is called ilium. Uh, and this is pubis. And this part called ischium. Again, the larger part here is ilium, pubis, and ischium. We have two hip, bone, hip bones here, left and right. The two hip bones meet in the symphys pubis in the midline in front like this. This is called symphys pubis. Uh, so the two hip bones meet in the pubis here. This We call this ilium and this pubis. Pubis and pubis meet in the symphys pubis here. Uh, I want to discuss some simple parts here. This The ilium has crest here. It's called ilia crest, this margin up here. The crest and anteriorly and the anterior superior iliac spine. Anterior ilia, ilium. So related to ilium is iliac. Iliac spine, anterior superior iliac spine. This is pubis. The pubis here has upper end. We have pubic tubercle. Uh, between pubic tubercle and symphys pubis, this area or this part called pubic crest. So this this is iliac crest. This is pubic crest, okay? Pubic tubercle, pubic crest. Uh, the pubis has body and superior ramus and the inferior ramus. So the pubic tubercle and the crest on the body of pubis, on the upper end of the body of pubis. And this is pubic crest. Uh, the superior pubic ramus, sorry. On the superior pubic ramus, here we have a line called pectineal line. Again, body, body of pubis, superior pubic ramus, inferior pubic ramus. On the body of pubis here, we have pubic tubercle and the crest. And on the superior pubic ramus, this is called pectineal line. Pectineal line here. Muscles in this area, we have three flat muscles on the anterior lateral abdominal wall. Very important here. This muscle called the outermost muscle is external oblique here. Deep to external oblique, we have internal oblique. This internal oblique. Then transversus abdominis. Again. We have three flat muscles here, very important here. External oblique, internal oblique, and when we remove this, transversus abdominis. Uh, I will show you this in small diagram, simple diagram here. We have here sim this simple diagram about the muscles. <clears throat> this is the iliac crest here. Uh, symphys pubis, pubic uh, crest and tubercle, sternum here, and the five process. Between the five process and symphys pubis, this is called linea alba, okay? Linea alba means white line. Alba means white, linea means line, okay? <coughs> And the flat muscles here, external oblique, internal oblique. When we remove external oblique, we find this muscle, internal oblique. And after removing internal oblique, we find transversus abdominis, okay? Oblique muscle, directed down and the medial, external oblique. Internal oblique, up and the medial, oblique. Transversus fibers run horizontally like this. Um, I don't want to give you very uh, much, so much details here. I want to just discuss the inguinal canal. In the lower part of external oblique here, we call we find this is this part is inguinal ligament. The external oblique has fleshy fibers like this, and aponeurosis. The beginning of the muscle is fleshy, flesh here, and this is aponeurosis, flat tendon of the muscle. 
The lower part of the aponeurosis of external oblique extends from anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle. We call this inguinal ligament. Okay. So part of external oblique extends from anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle is called the inguinal ligament. And from upper surface of inguinal ligament, there is fibers of internal oblique make like an arching fiber like this. This is this called lower arching fibers of internal oblique. Lower arching fibers of internal oblique. Arises from the lateral two thirds of inguinal ligaments. Okay. Make arching like this. And the end of this arch is the conjoint tendon here. This is the conjoint tendon. So the arching fibers arise from the inguinal ligament. I want to remind you, the inguinal ligament is part of external oblique, okay? And the arching fibers of internal oblique, this is the internal oblique, arises from upper surface of inguinal ligament. This is the inguinal ligament from upper two thirds of, from lateral two thirds of inguinal ligament. At, at the end, and at the edge of this arching fibers, we have conjoint tendon. If we look here, we have space here, you see, between the arching fibers of internal oblique and inguinal ligament here. We, we call this space inguinal canal, okay? I will show you now a small model to understand this. So this is arching fibers of internal oblique, and this is a conjoint tendon. When removing internal oblique, we find this, transverse abdominis. The lower part of transversus also, we have an arching fibers also like this arises from the inguinal ligament from lateral one-third of inguinal ligaments and this arching fiber end also in conjoint tendon this is arching fibers of transverse of transverse abdominis of transverse abdominis okay so we have two arching fibers here arching fibers of internal oblique and arching fibers of transversus abdominis, okay? Two arching fibers and one conjoint tendon. These two arching fibers of internal oblique and of transversus, the two arching fibers, you need to form the conjoint tendon. And this, if you see here, the conjoint tendon attached to pubic crest and pectineal line. Remember, this is the pubic tubercle, the conjoint tendon here attached to the pubic crest and to the pectineal line. Also, between the arching fibers of transverse abdominis and the inguinal ligament, we have this space called inguinal canal. So, in the area of inguinal canal here, look here, this is the region of inguinal canal. We have aponeurosis of external oblique muscle, arching fibers of internal oblique, arching fibers of transverse abdominis, okay? In the lower medial part of external oblique, we have an opening here, this opening called inguinal ring. We call this superficial inguinal ring. Okay, we call this ring, we, uh, we say superficial, so there must be deep inguinal ring, okay? Um, after removing external oblique and internal oblique and transverse, we find a layer, another layer called fascia transversalis. This is deep, this layer is deep to transverse abdominis. And uh, this is the inguinal ligament here. If we measure the distance between anterior superior iliac spine and symphys pubis, and point this and make a point in the middle, on the midway between anterior superior iliac spine and symphys pubis, in the middle of this, we have a point called mid inguinal point, and this is called fascia transversalis. Remember, above mid inguinal point, we have a ring here. An opening in fascia transversalis half an inch above the mid inguinal point this is called deep inguinal ring so we have here in the lower medial part of external oblique we have superficial inguinal ring and above inguinal ligament here we have deep inguinal ring opening in fascia transversalis so the deep inguinal ring in fascia transversalis superficial inguinal ring 
in external oblique aponeurosis. The superficial inguinal ring in the lower medial part of external oblique aponeurosis here, and the deep inguinal ring in the fascia transversalis. What is the actual position? The exact position of the deep inguinal ring above the inguinal ligament. Where exactly? Above the mid inguinal point. What is the mid inguinal point? Point midway between anterior superior iliac spine and symphys pubis here. If we measure the distance between anterior superior iliac spine and symphys pubis, and midway between the two points here, with this is the mid inguinal point. Above this point, by a half, uh, and half, half an inch, we have the deep inguinal ring. Okay. <clears throat> so in this model, I will show you this layers of lower part of anterior abdominal wall. Again, this is a hip bone. The hip bone here is the ilium iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine. This is pubis, and this is a pubic tube, pubic tubercle, and pubic crest. And here is the pectineal line. This is the pectineal line. We have foramen here called obturator foramen. Um, external oblique aponeurosis. The direction is lower down and the medial like this. In the lower medial part of external oblique aponeurosis, we have superficial inguinal ring here. This ring is a base formed, it's formed by the pubic crest. I have two borders here called, each border called cross, medial cross and lateral cross. The medial and lateral cross is formed by the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle. And from the middle of the inguinal ligament, we have fibers like this, you see, perpendicular on the direction of the external oblique aponeurosis fibers like this called we find here medial crust and lateral crust so this fiber is called intercorural fibers intercorural fibers support the superficial inguinal ring so the superficial inguinal ring in the lower medial part of external oblique aponeurosis has two crura medial crust and lateral crust crust means limb limb and limb you know and the base of the corona, or the base of the ring, is formed by the pubic crest. When removing this external oblique muscle, I want to show first you this is inguinal ligament you see here. The inguinal ligament down from its lower part is convex like this, you see. The inguinal ligament is reflection from the external oblique down back and upward like this. This is inguinal ligament, you see. Okay. Also, we have expansions of inguinal ligament like this in the medial part. We call this part of inguinal ligament is, is called lacunar ligament and pectineal ligament here like this. All these are parts of inguinal ligament. This is the main part of inguinal ligament. We call it inguinal ligament proper. And this is a lacunar ligament. This is a pectineal ligament here like this. And from the medial part of inguinal ligament also we, behind superficial inguinal ring. And another expansion of inguinal ligament like this. We call this reflected part of inguinal ligament. So the inguinal ligament has three expansions. Again, this is lacunar ligament, pectineal ligament, and the reflected part. So the reflected part behind the superficial inguinal ring like this. Reflected part of inguinal ligament. Layers again in this part is external oblique, internal oblique, and transversal. So, when we remove the external oblique like this, we find the arching fibers of internal oblique. You see here, this is arching fibers of internal oblique. And after this, we find the arching fibers of transverse abdominis. If you find this, the internal is more wider because it arises from upper two thirds of inguinal ligament, and the transversus is more smaller because arise only from one third of inguinal ligament. So this is arching fibers of internal oblique and transversus abdominis. Two arching fibers, you see. And the two arching fibers unit together at the end forming the conjoint tendon here. This is the conjoint tendon. One conjoint tendon and two arching fibers, you see. Two arching fibers and one conjoint tendon. And this again, exter layers external oblique internal oblique, transverse abdominis, and fascia transversalis. You see this fascia transversalis. And we have here, this is the deep inguinal ring. This is the deep inguinal 
ring, okay? We, if you remember the deep inguinal ring above the inguinal ligament, okay? Uh, half an inch above the mid inguinal point. So where is the inguinal canal here? This is superficial inguinal ring, and it is the deep inguinal ring, and this is the lower part of anterior abdominal wall, okay? The inguinal canal present in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall, oblique passage, how like this? You see, this is inguinal canal, like that. See here? So this is the deep inguinal ring, this is superficial inguinal ring, this is inguinal canal, extends from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring. Deep inguinal ring of fascia transversalis here to superficial inguinal ring in the external oblique aponeurosis. The distance between the deep inguinal ring and superficial inguinal ring about one and a half inch or four centimeters. So the length of the inguinal canal is measured by measuring the distance between the deep, the deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring. We call this the inguinal canal. And also, if you see, what is the cover of the inguinal or I mean of the roof of the inguinal canal, what is the roof here? It's the arching fibers of internal and transversus, you see here? This is the arching fiber forming roof for inguinal canal. Here, like this. And about the floor of inguinal canal, this inguinal canal rests on the inguinal ligament, the upper surface of inguinal ligament, ligament, and this part also, lacunar ligament. So the floor of the inguinal canal is formed by the inguinal ligament and lacunar ligament here, you see. This is lacunar ligament and this is the inguinal ligament. This is the floor of the inguinal canal. What about the anterior wall of inguinal canal? I want to see. If you see this forceps here, like this, what is in front of it? The anterior wall is formed by external oblique, aponeurosis, and the arching fibers of internal oblique on the front of the deep ring like this. This is a internal oblique. Why not transversus? Because transversus is small. <clears throat> the anterior wall of inguinal canal here is formed by external oblique aponeurosis and internal oblique arching fiber of internal oblique, the beginning of arching fiber, okay? This. See? What about the posterior wall? Posterior wall is formed by the reflected part of inguinal ligament. The conjoint tendon here, the posterior wall, and this is the fascia transversalis. Uh, you know, again, inguinal canal, the lower part of anterior abdominal wall, extends from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring. We understand here that the roof of the inguinal canal, of the inguinal canal formed by the arching fibers here of internal and transversus. Floor of inguinal canal, down here by inguinal ligament and lacunar ligaments. In the second video, I will discuss for you more boundaries about the anterior wall and the posterior wall, and what are the kinds of types of inguinal hernia that arise in this area of canal.